I'm going to paint a, a cute little piece for the first time color pencil artist. And um, I traced the pattern to a black color fixed paper. And this is going to be glue over a piece of wood and I will show you that later. But right now I just cut it with scissors because this paper, if you don't cut it with scissors, it will break. So I cut it with scissors and it is a 4 by 6 uh, piece of paper. And what I did was I put the pattern on top of the piece. This is the pattern that I have copied on a vellum paper. And I put it on top of the piece and I put a piece of graphite underneath like this. Put a piece of graphite underneath like this. And I went over with a stylus and I transfer the pencil or the graphite. So the next step is we're going to start with colored pencils and I want to show you since you are painting for the first time with colored pencils I'm going to tell you a lot of information that you need to know in order to succeed in this medium. First of all, I love papers that have texture and that was why I selected this pen uh, paper, Color Fix. The reason being is because it takes many, many layers of pencils and that's what we're going to do in here. There's a video in the video library about selecting papers, papers with, with uh, will tell you about different kind, type of papers and you can watch that video in order to know which paper to select. Then before I start painting a piece I always try the colors on a piece of paper and the reason I, why I love also love uh, the, the one, the paper that is called sweatboard. Okay, so this is sweatboard and it has a darker, richer color of black. But this is the problem that I found that the colors do not look as vibrant as the color look on my color fix. For example, I was trying to put the, let's see, this is deco peach and this is what it will look on this background, the copiche, and this is the de copiche, this is what it will look on this one. So you see the difference? Even though I put many layers in here, it still looks better on this one. I'm going to try another color. This is the pink. Pink. The pink on the sweatboard and the pink in here. You see the difference? It's more vibrant in here. It's like blended with the black in here. So that's why I selected the, the one called Color, color Fix. I'm going to write it for you in here so you know what it is. Color Fix. Okay. Okay, I started this very bad because the camera was off. So, I'm going to start again and I'm going to tell you all the piece about colored pencils. And the first P is patience. Something I don't have right now. Sorry. Uh, I was filming out of camera but this class is for beginners and we want to know all the piece about color pencils and color pencils is something that you have to have patience because it cannot be done fast. You have to practice to become better and you have to have perseverance. The most important one is point. The point has to be 
very very sharp because we're going to use a paper that has a lot of texture which is called Color Fix and there's videos on the video library about paper. Um, Color Fix has a lot of um, uh, groups, texture, it has a lot of texture and if you have pencils that are dull like this, they're going to start building the pressure on the top of the grooves and building up the wax and wax is the component that will um, give you the most trouble on a paper because it will be like a resistance, it will not let you put any more color and you want to put many layers so if your pencils have a, a very sharp point you will be able to go inside those grooves inside these grooves and apply more layers and the other thing is you're gonna and I was applying here the, the white on this line I'm sorry I was out of camera you're gonna do circular motions like this and at 45 degree angle 45 degree angle when you want to go inside a groove that is not taking the pencil then you go at a 90 degree angle and you're gonna have minimal minimal pressure that is very important the pressure if you wanna know the pressure that you have you take your hand and a very sharp point and start coloring in your hand and you should be tickling your hand if you're hurting your hand that means that you're using too much pressure to avoid using too much pressure instead of holding the pencil like that where you have a lot of control you can hold the pencil far away and that way you have less control and less pressure on the pencil so let's show you how to do this. Uh, I have a lining here and I'm lining there. When I, I, this is a Kala Lily which has a lot of lines so I want to have that line in there because it is in the photo. But if you didn't want like in here that is more blended in this area, if you didn't want to have a line you're gonna go in a zigzag motion and go outside of that line so when you bring the other pencil it will blend with that uh, area so pencil patience practice perseverance point pressure if I remember any other, I said a lot before when I was outside of camera, so let's see if I remember the others. We're going to start with the next color, and I'm going to layer the color side by side. I'm going to, I've started with the white, because white is the color that has that, um, if you want it to be white, it can be, it has to be put from the beginning, and once you put a dif different color, you will not be able to achieve white again, because color pencils are transparent. This is very important about color pencil. They are transparent. That means that they blend with whatever is underneath. So if if I put another color on top or underneath the white, it's going to blend. It's not going to be any more white. For example, if I put now a pink on top of the color pencil, now it's going to be white plus pink. It's going to be a lighter version of the pink because the color pencils are transparent and they blend with each other. So if you want something to stay white, you have to leave it white, only white on that area. And I want this area to be very white. So I'm going to try not to put any other colors on top of that. So I'm going to go now to the next color that I have in here and that's going to be a light pink and I pull out some of my pencils in here I'm gonna sharpen because I wanna have a very sharp point and I'm gonna go in that and I'm gonna feel in a circular motion So 
circular motion and I want to blend a tiny bit that line so I'm going inside the other color and I'm going to put this color up to where you have that other line. When I put lines on my designs they are more like um, guidance so you know up to where but I don't want I want to break this line so I'm gonna go on a zigzag motion I'm going to put this color and I think I'm gonna put it everywhere on this top section so this top section and that even though this is for a beginner class I don't want to make huge videos so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically this outside of camera but I'm going to show you first what I want to do I don't want to lose a guideline that I have in here so I'm just going to mark it in there I know that I have a depth, some depth in there and I have another line in here so I do not lose those lines. The remainder is okay to put. So what I'm going to do, the remainder of this area, I'm going to go very slow. You can say that you have to go slow because if you go fast, you're going to build your pressure because when you're rushing, you bring pre pressure but when you are going slow and this is deco pink deco pink it's the first color here that we are using is deco pink deco pink and we are going to put it all the way in this top section up to here up to here all this section is going to be with deco pink and I'm going to do that outside of camera uh, or I can either let's see I'm gonna try and then I can move this section faster so for example you see that some areas are not getting so you can go on the point and this is another P pivot pivoting and I'm gonna explain that to you again when you are painting with colored pencils you are wearing down the point of the pencil and you start wearing down the point of the pencil and the point was here and all of a sudden the point turned to be at a different area then you start wearing it down again and the point is now at a different area so you have to pivot like this your pencil so that you can go you see I don't know if you can see that Let me put it on um, in here how the point now is in this this tiny tiny area in there and I can use that small point and once I start wearing that small point it's gonna be in another area so that is what you're gonna do and first you're gonna put layers this is gonna be layers on top of layers this is only the first layer of pencil and this surface is one that has a lot of texture and it grabs a lot of pencil and you're, what you're gonna have is poster beauty or poster tag that is that's what you're gonna have to remove the pencil from your piece try to find my poster beauty here I have to find my poster beauty and I will, in the next session, I will show you.
I'm going to finish putting the color in here and I will be right back. There are many brands. This is uh, the brand uh, Elmer's, but they come in many brands and many colors. This one is blue. It comes in white, in yellow. Uh, this uh, sometimes is called Poster Beauty. Sometimes it's called Poster Tag. So that is what I'm talking about, and I put it on 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 a metal case because if you put it in something uh, plastic or a piece of uh, plastic bag, it will glue to that. So. This is where I put it and this is what I use to remove any particle that is in my paper or even to take out some pencil when you want to fix something. So I'm going to finish putting the color here and I will be right back. There's another way of putting color pencil. If you're going fast, you can go lines one way and then you can go lines the other way and then you can go on top circles whatever is easier for you if you want to do circles if you want to do lines but if you do lines make sure you go in all directions and after I have done this I am going to Put my pencil at a 90 degree angle. You see, now I think I have to sharpen. So I try not to sharpen too often. See, now that I have a good point, I can go to those places that are stubborn or didn't get any pencil. and put pencil on those areas that needs to. And this paper is great for beginners because beginners tends to put a lot of pressure and this paper takes uh, more pressure than uh, paper that doesn't have any texture. I'm going to finish in here and we're going to put all the colors that we need to and we're going to show you also how to use the product and sole in this tiny demonstration. Okay, so I'm going to now stand my pencil in some areas. I don't want to put yet too much layers because I want to start creating the lines. And those lines are going to be created with white. But before we do that, we're going to go to blush pink and we're going to paint this area with a darker pink. And maybe blush pink is not the color that we need. Let's go to, um, let's see. We're going to do pink on the, up to this line that you have in there. And I did it sharpen. Pink. Let's put pink in here. And then the blush pink. to a base coat of all the colors and then we can take a photograph for you. Okay, the next color that we're going to base coat, we're going to base coat this area, except it has a tiny bit of white in here, that's why you have a line in there so you 
no, but you have to put white in there. And then you can put a uh, blush pink in here. The lights. I am blocking the lights. And then the remainder is going to be base coat with pink. It's a hake brush to remove particles. Circular motion. Okay. So now I am, um, let me see, I forgot to pull another color. Let me just pull another color and I will be right back. Okay, so this is Jello Chartreuse. Let me write that down. Okay, so this is Jello Chartreuse, and we're going to put Jello Chartreuse in this section in here. See, I gave you another line in there. Sharpen. Again, we are just putting the fur application of color and we are going to take a photograph and then we can continue putting more than that. Okay, so the next color that we're going to do is Deco Pish. I don't think we have to go all to the copish. Let's try salmon pink alone. If not, we can put the copish. So salmon. Blend those two colors, the chartreuse with the salmon in there. And it's good to put this color because the, um, I have a paper that it will go with this and it has a lot of uh, pishy with it. So let's put this color. And I'm going to the lines because I'm trying to go fast so that I can put uh, videos that are not too fast. But remember, you don't have to go this fast because you have the videos you can uh, fast forward rewind or even stop the video while I'm doing this and you can uh, you don't have to do it this fast I'm just trying to save time video time Okay, since I was doing a line, I'm going to go in the other direction and it's another uh, section in here, but um, see this is the deco pink that we put in here. This section is very, very light, uh, so I'm going to start building those light with the white. It's a section, very light section of white like that, and all this is very light. And 
and then this area that only has white. Okay, we're gonna start worrying about that later. Okay, let's continue with the bottom section and we're gonna start with the greens and this time we're gonna put spring green spring green is the highlighting here up to there spring green spring green now I'm going to zigzag and break that line. And the next color that I'm going to put is going to be apple green. And I'm going to take apple green and put it up to there. And you know what? I'm not going to put the shading yet because I want to take a photograph and then we can start shading and highlighting but let's put the first coat of color the apple green zigzag inside zigzagging inside of that other line that you created without even thinking where you start or where you go with the zigzag if you do it this way you're gonna break that line Once you have put this other color, if you want to further break that line, you're going to zigzag again with the other color. I'm going to show you. Take the spring green and zigzag again, and that will further break that line. And I don't know about you, but I think I cover it very good. I don't think, um, I don't see the line that of separation in there. Now there is a tiny section that we're missing in there. Let's put a... Blush pink in here because it is a tiny bit lighter. But uh, we're going to blend that blush pink with the pink. And there's a section of white in here. And then the remainder is the pink. Again, this is only the first application of color. First application of color. Uh, we are going to put gold around the paper. But I just want to tell you, in case you don't want to do that, you can take um, black, which I don't have here, and just go over the pencil with that. Or erase it because that thing that you see as white is when I was cutting I put a chalk pencil in there anyway this is what you're gonna do later uh, what I'm gonna do when I have the gansol I'm gonna apply the gansol um, all over this black so I can clean the background that's another tip that I'm gonna give you the white lines are gonna go all the way down all 
all the way down and you can you, we didn't put it in the pattern because it is better even when you do it without even thinking about it and we are starting to build those but we're gonna continue to build them okay so let's go with the leaf and then we can take a photo the leaf I wanted it to be less uh, different color um, there's not photo for this piece there was a photo that I use as reference but it's not the same and I want to extend the chartreuse up to here the yellow chartreuse can hardly see it so I'm putting it again okay let's then um, paint the leaf okay so I want to this one have a highlight in here so I'm gonna start with the white I'm gonna put some white in here because that's gonna lighten the color that I'm gonna put on top I'm gonna put a highlight in here and in here then um, the shading would be most green and I'm gonna put some more green in here And I want to put some moss green in here and in here. Maybe a tiny bit of moss green in here and in here. And then the remainder I'm going to fill with the lime peel. So I'm putting the remainder, I'm putting line peel, circular motion. This is only the base coat. Notice that I'm putting um, some of the line peel on top of here because I don't want to have areas that are very, very sharp uh, edges. It's never good to have sharp edges. Um, I think I'm gonna put a tiny bit of highlight with the whiting here and you see how bad is my point? Let's put a tiny bit of highlight in there like that. I'm gonna continue with the line peel. And we're going to take a photo and we have our first application of color on. That wasn't that bad, huh?
forget that you have the moss green there I'm gonna blend it in there zigzagging you know up and down up and down I have the dark next to the lining here right the line peel on the other side of that line in there and you do you want to have that line in there because this is a leaf and leaf have a vein and that is the vein line zigzag when you get to the area where you have that uh, moss green you zigzag in there and you can also zigzag with the line peel put some of that line peel on the edges and zigzag in there with the moss green and the line peel Okay. Oof. So we have our first application of color. Yay! So now we are going to take a photo for you. Sure you have the dark in here with the moss green in there and in here underneath there's a tiny flip in there. Tiny flip in there and in here. Normally do not glue uh, the paper afterwards, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue this paper in here uh, and I have some decorations that I'm going to put on top, uh, but I want to show you what I did. I painted the borders, the borders of this with black and now I'm going to put this with, with an exacto knife. I'm going to cut the remaining sections uh, and then I'm going to put a border of gold around and that will accent with the accents that gold accents that I'm going to put so I want to show you I cut it and see what happens now you have a border you're gonna take one of those soft sandpaper and I look I'd like to use the 400 grid and this is what you're gonna do you are going to sand that border so that it is smooth. See, like that. And that's what you're going to do. And then um, I really want to put the border of gold. You don't have to. I, didn't, I don't always do it. Uh, because you see that you have the white in there. You can either, you can paint it with colored pencil that section so that it's no longer white like that so I don't know if you can see what I painted but you can paint it or you can put the border and I decided to put the border because I want to show you why I was thinking of painting the border because I want to put this gold uh, accents and if I have the border in here and probably in here it will go more with that uh, that I'm putting there and this is what I'm gonna do and I think it's gonna pr look pretty pretty nice so with the border um, on both papers this paper and this paper will have the border 
so I'm gluing this paper afterwards in here so back to our piece I was putting the moss green in there anyway we are going to start shading highlighting and giving more that I put a piece of the paper that we're going to use so that if I can take an idea I have an idea of the colors that I need and the first thing that we're going to do is start shading let's shade the bottom section whoopsie daisy I see go like that okay so we're going to shade uh, the back part with the in the bottom section we're going to use dark green let's shade and then take a picture and then highlight and take a picture so that it is more the instructions can be followed by a beginner so this is the shading and can you see that I am doing the zigzagging and I am trying also to cover that graphite line that you have in there. Standing my pencil at a 90 degree angle will help me better cover that graphite line. And then I'm gonna go with what color was that was the medium value? It was the spring green? No. The apple green. The Let's go zigzag with the apple green and blend that color in there. I like to blend with the same colors, but you can also use Gamsol. I was going to use Gamsol. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to use Gamsol. If I don't, then I do another video uh, with the Gamsol. I want to shade also the yellow chartreuse and I'm gonna use lime peel we're just shading right now I use lime peel in here and I'm gonna do a tiny bit on on this other side I'm going to take the yellow chartreuse and I'm going to put a tiny bit of the yellow chartreuse on top of there and blend that line I want to take some of that peach on top of the yellow chartreuse and this is salmon pink every time that you take a color you put another application of color your um, piece starts uh, taking more shape building up the colors gonna take a tiny bit of that moss green and further shading here like that and we want to have some green on this side and maybe let's bring some of the spring green on that side we are shading we are not highlighting we will highlight on a second stage but at the same time, if we need to, we're put applying more color. This is the salmon pink that was in here. At the same time, we are reapplying any color that we need to reapply. Okay, let's shade the leaf. Since we are at the bottom, let's shade that leaf. And we can go and shade with the uh, dark green
but we don't want this leaf to be too cool and this color is very cool so we're gonna put on top of that the moss green and we are shading remember not highlighting yet this is the dark green not highlighting yet and that's the dark green Blend it with the moss green. Okay, so let's shade. And this is mulberry. Gonna shade in here with mulberry. I think we need to put a tiny bit of more of the pink in there because I see some black through. I'm reapplying color and I don't want to lose the white that I put in there so we're just gonna put it because if we don't put it we will lose it although I am not highlighting yet okay so and I forgot to put the li white lines in there so I'm gonna put them before I forget Okay, so we are shading. Let's reapply the pink in here. And we put white in there that we don't want to lose, right? We put a tiny bit in here. And we put a tiny bit in here. And a tiny bit in here of the white. And let's blend that with the blush pink. Again, it's not that I am highlighting yet but I don't want to lose that when I reapply the color so I'm just reapplying colors so that I don't lose um, the colors that I have before I shade and this is the pink so reapplying colors when you're watching a video that I, um, you can either go back and reapply the colors if they're not showing you um, if you think you need more colors, you go back and you reapply all the colors. The more colors you put, the richer you, your piece is going to look. Salmon pinking here. So now that I reapply the colors, I can shade with the mulberry. And I am also shading with dark purple. Smaller, smaller areas. So I'm building a pyramid of color. Let's see the mulberry in here. 
I'm going to extend it up to here. And then we can put in there the dark purple. I don't use the fixative. If you were, and this is a cast shadow. I don't want to blend that line. But I'm going to shade it with uh, dark purple. They were, that was Melbury, and this is dark purple. But more of the mul I'm going to blend with the Mulberry. You can ta uh, slightly blend it, but not go on top like that, but not um, not trying to eliminate the line. Okay, we have to shade. We have to give another application of the color that we had in the top, and it was Deco Pink. So let's start applying a second application of Deco Pink. Maybe we should apply first the white lines. So that we don't lose them. The white. the white and the deco pink I'm gonna put also white on this border but we should not be highlighting yet. I am reshaping this. Got a tiny bit to stray for my taste. And that was uh, Deco Pink. And I am reapplying the deco pink, but I'm gonna shade. I'm gonna take this out of here. We get the idea. Circular motion, linear motion. I continue I want to bring some dark stew in here and I don't want to fill all the paper because this paper can get filled too and then you're gonna start seeing that it will not take any more color because we have some pink in here this is pink we have some pink shading in here We have some pink in here and some areas. Let's put some pink in here. And let's continue filling with the deco pink.
hope you're enjoying this. to fill in all those holes but there's an uh, easier way to do this and but I don't want to introduce you yet to the gun sole. I want to show you first how to blend with the pencils because normally I blend with the colored pencils and not with the gun sole. I have so many Okay, let's finish with this color, the go pink, and then we're going to start uh, take another photo and highlight and do more. So this is the highlighting photo. I mean shading photo and another layer of color and some shading but first let me finish with the shading I want to shade because this is uh, oval both sides let me just take the excess like that and when you want something to be round you have to have uh, shading on both sides so I'm going to put pink on this edge to make this rounder and I'm going to zigzag. I also want some shading in here. And a tiny bit of shading in here. One it very light in here. Put another white section in there, but very light in here. And then I want to take some pink in here. And in here. And then uh, we need to further shade these as pink, but um, we can put another color also in there. We're going to put some of the mulberry in there. I'm going to put a um, tiny bit of the peach in here and the mulberry. That peach is going to give it a tiny bit brownish, different coloration. Okay, so I'm going to take another photo and we can put more layers. Before I take the photo, I noticed that I didn't put any vein lines. So this is um, yellow chartreuse. And I'm putting a middle vein line and some secondary vein lines. And then I'm going to shade because I like to do that in between the vein lines with dark green. And I'm gonna go with moth green. I'm gonna go with moth green a tiny bit over that vein line and over the maybe over every, everything in here is too. I don't want this to overpower the flower. I want it to be to have vein lines, but they cannot be too strong. 
So I'm going to take another photo. This is probably overpowering too, so I'm going to go over with the moss green and quiet that down a tiny bit. Because this, let's go with the line fill and blend. The start of the show is the flower and not the leaf. We want the leaf to have some value, but we don't want to overpower the flower. And I get excited and I put that was a lime peel and this is moth green and start doing things that I'm not supposed to do. Okay, let's put some lime peel on the back of these. I mean, moss green on the back there. Okay, let's take the photo and we can return to more. Looking at this lining here, and I don't like it in there, I'm just gonna go over with, uh, this is uh, blush pink, and salmon pink start feeling this more another layer of color so now we're gonna start highlighting I put lime peel in there okay so we're going to start highlighting and again we're going to go with the white And we're gonna go with the uh, SC chartreuse in here. So I am applying the colors again too. And some white in here. And there's white in here. And in here, Let's take some pink and blend in there. We have pink in here. I mean, it's, it's a shading, but um, we don't want to lose it. And we have pink on the edge. We already did the shading, so if we have to redo them, we redo them. Gonna blend with deco pink this and I think I'm gonna also put deco peach because you know why? Because I wanna it, it to be peachier so that it matches this deco peach. pink and deco peach I mean some uh, that was deco peach but we need taco, salmon in there salmon Once you have all the colors, you can apply a tiny bit more pressure, but that's at the end and 
you're not, not too familiar, it's better not to do any pressure then. This is the copiche. Pink. Pink. White. And the copish. The copish. Pink. Pink. Let's put a tiny bit of mulberry in there. I don't want to bring any other colors, but I keep trying to make um, like a um, burnt sienna color and uh, instead of trying to keep doing it with the pencils, I'm gonna bring a Versiana color. This color, pumpkin orange, works. Let's highlight this section in here. Put a tiny bit of pink underneath. And deco pink. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna finish with the highlights, I'm gonna take another picture and then we're gonna put the gamsol. We are going to put the gamsol because I wanna clean I show you very good blended. So finish with the highlight, the strong, strong highlights. Want to have very strong highlights, not only here, but here. There's another one in here. I hope you're enjoying this, this as much as I am. So I love painting and I love nature. Okay, let's put some of the pink. Let's 
see there's some highlight also in here. Trying to blend without the gamsole so that you can see how it is without the gamsole. And then we're going to use the gamsole and you're going to see the difference. Let's uh, do some more of the peach. That's the copish, but I want. Um, some more of the salmon peach. And some more of the lime peel in there. Okay, one more thing that we're gonna do, let's play on the on this leaf. Let's give it some character to there. We can put some of the pink colors. Let's see. This is blush pink and it's not the color that I want. Let's put pink. Like the color of the flower reflects on the leaf. And let's highlight. I put a tiny bit of chartreuse in here. And maybe in this tip. Let's blend that pink with the moss green. Quiet that down a tiny bit. You can highlight a tiny bit with the um, lime peel in here. Blend with the moss green. Further highlight with some of the la, uh, yellow chartreuse. Yellow chartreuse. Okay, I'm gonna take another photo and I'm gonna show you the gansol and we're gonna be done with this. For applying the gansol, I wanna put some more screen in here on this side, like that, on the bottom section. When that bottom section disappearing. Okay, there's two ways of applying the gansol and because I don't want you to um, be in trouble in here and lose all the line work that you need to have in here because you need to have a, bit, a lot of lines in here. So I'm going to show you the method that is with very small amount of Gamsol. That is not the method that I call the method that I called um, blended like oils. 
The method that I call blended like oils is completely different. It's not that one. Okay. This is the method that I used that I used long time ago. Um, that was applying very small amount of Gansol. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use a brush, and I'm going to dip the brush into clean Gansol. I'm gonna start with the white section so I don't dirty my white. I have a clean brush, and I'm gonna put a very small amount of Gansol. I'm gonna blot it on the paper towel, and then I'm going to put the Gansol on my piece. Now, while the console is wet, and I'm doing the wipe first, while the console is wet, you can take your white and reapply the white. And it's going to melt. Your pencil is going to melt in there. Now, there's so much lining on this piece that I am afraid that if you use this method of the gamsol you're gonna lose all the lines so I want you to touch it very very softly very softly so just moving oops moving it very with a small amount of gamsol just trying to fill in the black paper that is left behind and do one section at a time so that you can reapply color on that section if needed salmon pink while it is wet you can reapply so do a section at a time and try to cover any holes that you have left or take pencils and apply another layer of colors that's another way of doing it this was the apple green you can reapply apple green there and spring green and moss green are the colors that are in there so apple green spring green on the light and most green on the back part so that's what you do when you apply the gum so you're moving you're turning your your pencil into paint when you use Gamsol. I'm putting a very small amount of Gamsol because I don't want, I want this to continue being very lined. And that's the last thing that I'm gonna do with this flower and then I'm going to glue it I'm gonna let it dry see what happens you can take the, your pencil also if you put too much gamsol this is blush pink and pink um, I'm gonna let this completely dry and I'm gonna varnish it before I glue it because I don't want to I don't want to lose uh, damage the, the pencil that I just did with the glue. So that's what I'm going to do. So I am going with the same colors that were in there um, and reapplying the colors. I was the deco pink and this is the pink. So that's what you're going to do. But if you stay in an area, you make a hole, you have to put more pencil 
deco pink and pink and I'm just going to stop now putting this because I really like it the way it was I just wanted to show you but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep on applying the pencil um, but without the gum sole and that's what you I want you to do um, I want to have the lines in here If you have gone so and you lose your colors, just put them back. Another tip that you may not know is that um, some color pencil artists, and I learned that from a lot of the fine artists, um, they use the, um, these um, coal gel pen and while it is wet you can move it with a brush and then you can achieve these l very light lines that you need to have because uh, the white is very difficult to put on top of other colors and after that is dry you can even uh, go over with the color pencil I hope you enjoy this and take more classes uh, from the color pencil club.